Hello everyone. In this class, we are going to see how to input elements for the list. There are different methods. One is using loop. We can use either for loop or while loop that depends on the programmer's choice. Other one is taking input using a single statement. Both we will see in this class. Now, normally if we want to take an input using the loop, then we need to have the list initialized as empty there in the beginning. So, I have L1 as empty list there and then number of elements whatever is needed that we will be giving in the range function. So, for i in range 5, I need 5 elements here. I have given 5 there. Now, I will be writing the input statement n is equal to input of enter an element. So, every time the for loop runs, it takes one element and then we will be appending that to the list. So, l1 dot append of n. This is one method where it will take 5 elements for the list. After that, it stops. Similar way, we can also use while loop. For using while loop, we will be having one more variable to ask the user whether to continue or not. I give a condition here while cyn is equal to y. So, similar in the for loop, I write here n is equal to input, enter an element. It will be taking the element and then it will be appending to the list. And then it will ask whether to continue or not. In case the user gives any other than y, it will be stopping. So, either one of this you can use uh, if you want to uh, get the input from the user. This is the proper way to get the input uh, for a list or even tuple. Even for the dictionary we can use this. The other way is using eval function. We will learn what is eval function and we will come back here. Eval function has the capacity to evaluate the expression even if it is a string. So, for this reason we can also use for inputting the list or tuple even for the dictionary. For example, eval of 50 minus 30 which is inside the quote that means it is a string. Still, it will understand that as an expression and gives the value after evaluation. So, that means it is 20 now. Similar way, if eval of 1, 2, 3 as a list in as a string, then it will take that as a list. We can also use this for tuple. This also means a tuple here. We know that input statement always takes input as a string. If we add eval to that, automatically whatever input is given by the user will be evaluated as required and then taken as input. So, we can give L1 is equal to eval of input of then the message to the user. So, the user now can give a list, a tuple or even a dictionary there. Please note that using eval function has some disadvantages. So, it is not encouraged. Now, let us run the code on Python and understand better. Let us create a small program which takes input for the list and then again it displays it. I need an empty list to be initialized before. I give L1 is equal to empty for i in range 4 x is equal to input of message to the user enter the element. Now, I will be appending this to the list. So, L1 dot append of x. So, it takes 4 input for the list and then after that it stops. It will be saved in the L1. I will be printing this statement to be outside the loop. So, just I give print L1. Let us run this. I say here Python, C++, Java, C. You could see the output as a list. Similar way, if we need a while loop, we can take continuous input 
or else even n number of input we can give. Let us change this program to have n number of input until user says no. I need to get the input every time whether to continue or not. For that purpose I need one variable I give c is equal to initially I give that as capital Y. Now while c is equal to equal to y. I do not need this for loop. So, input is taken and then that is being appended and then I will ask the user to continue or not. For that purpose I will be giving c is equal to input of the message I give here is to continue enter y. Sometimes user may give in lower case to avoid the error there I convert that to upper case upper half. So, either the user gives in lower case or upper case it works C plus plus it asks whether to continue or not I give Y Java. So, again Y Python again Y Perl again Y I give C. C now I have given 5 inputs all 5 will be in the list if I give any other simply I press enter also it will stop. Now let us use the eval function. I need nothing here. One single statement that is eval of input of message to the user enter the list. So, just I am going to print that list. So, you could see that it has taken as a list and then it is printed back. Simply I give here input. I am giving here 5 into 3, it will give the result. So, we can also use eval for these type of inputs. Hope now it is very clear to you. Keep practicing, keep learning, keep sharing this video to others so that they also learn well. Let us meet in the next class. Until then, thank you and bye.